Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to the second part of this uh, Q&A thingamabobber. Uh, if you missed part one, I will leave you a link to that about, uh, I think it's been like two months now. Uh, a bunch of you nice people submitted your questions. Some more nice people uh, voted for the questions that they wanted me to answer. And now here we are running through the second part of the list. So let's get into it. So this question has a bit of an uh, aggressive tone. But uh, I don't know, there's plenty of debates in life. Uh, CA glue and masking tape versus carpet tape for holding your templates and your work pieces together temporarily while you route and uh, do something. Both things have their merits. I'll share some pros and cons. But first off, just to address one small part of this statement, the whole this is going to make a mess thing, I don't... If you're making a mess, you're doing it wrong. And that's kind of the advantage of this method is that if you do it right, when you pull the tape off, you have absolutely no cleanup. There's no residue or anything to really worry about. With carpet tape, I, there's typically some residue, which isn't a huge deal, but just to just drive home the fact that you really shouldn't have anything to clean up if you're using this with your masking tape correctly. And that is the biggest downside. And the thing I don't like about using uh, CA glue and tape is that you have to make sure your tape is in roughly the same spot or use a very wide base of tape so that when your template goes on top of your workpiece, the tape actually aligns and the CA glue hits the tape on the other piece so you don't have a bunch of squeeze out or you don't miss and glue you know, half a piece of tape to your actual workpiece or vice versa. So that can get uh, kind of annoying. I use both these techniques in the shop depending on what's the most convenient at that time. Uh, if I can find this thing, since this is actually the preferred method. The, uh, the downside to carpet tape is that it is uh, pressure sensitive or pressure activated. So to get a really good bond, typically I'll put the workpiece, put the template in the vise and clap them together over, over top of where that carpet tape is to really get the stuff to grab and hold. And it works uh, pretty nicely in that sense. The uh, downside is you might have some residue from the tape, but it's not typically a big deal. This typically is going to be more difficult to do with the pressure activation on larger work pieces or potentially more fragile work pieces uh, and stuff like that. So this is my carpet tape that I've had for uh, like 14 years. It's, it's getting down there. <laughs> so for workbench recommendations, I guess, you know, like always, it depends. <laughs> It really depends on the type of work you're doing, but if you happen to do, you know, work somewhat like I do, I think a Rubo bench is uh, a great way to go. The nice thing about this, and we'll talk about the, the breakdown functionality in a second, but if you, need, if you need to get this out of a normal size door, this is not a huge, ridiculously wide or deep bench. The standard size for a Rubo workbench is going to be 24 inches deep. And if you have a split top, it's going to be the same thing, but your two slabs are both 11, and it leaves you with a two inch gap in the middle. Now that brings us back to the transportability, I guess, pro of this particular bench. And that is that the top two slabs are just bolted on, and they're sitting there on tenons on top of legs. And there's a couple of uh, lag bolts that go up into the top to hold them down. You want to do those lag bolts, you can pick up, I mean, you can, you probably want a friend, <laughs> but you can pick up and move each slab individually. And the base itself, you can also move as a single unit, or you can do a knockdown version of the base, which I did in a previous video for uh, Brad's workbench, where the long rails, the stretchers, have um, barrel nuts on there. So you can undo those. And then you have these two side leg assemblies and the two long stretchers to move. So this bench actually breaks down and moves really nicely. It also moves really nicely if you happen to have a forklift. You just fork it and go wherever you want. <laughs> I think we're going to be well past the, uh, the Game of Thrones level of episodes. I think the island, the last one, took us past that at that point. But uh, just to give you sort of an idea of where things are at, uh, with the, the last island video being posted, I have uh, 14 more videos mapped out, and I am currently in the process of, somewhere in the process 
of production on five of the next videos. I am um, doing the next trim video. I have the basic drawers video. I have the countertops video and um, the doors video and the, the hutches video, the last the two remaining cabinets video. All five of those are currently at some stage of production and those are some of the longer ones that take the most amount of time to kind of get through. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's, uh, I don't know, there's at least 14 more videos that I have to make and, or nine more that I haven't started, I guess. So that's kind of where that's at. So next up, what are we going to do with the uh, existing kitchen space? So the renovation essentially takes the three spaces down here and moves them all clockwise. So this new kitchen used to be the entryway and then the current dining room is going to become the new entryway. So the entryway is moving from this kind of area into here. The dining room is going to go into here into the existing kitchen. And as far as uh, Donovan coming back, uh, when we framed the whole back of the addition, we added the bump out here for the sideboard. So the wall that's currently behind the kitchen sink gets removed and our bump out will be exposed. And that bump out is where the sideboard is going to live. That was one of the things we designed in here to make the space more usable is to take the furniture piece and set it outside of the room essentially so you maintain circulation space around the table without the furniture you know encroaching on your, your space as you're pulling out your chairs or whatever and this is sort of like the last missing piece of the puzzle of uh, the new space is uh this doorway here which will be probably like the last thing i do because in order to actually put that door in that doorway is smack dab in the middle of the counters <laughs> and if you want to know more about the uh the design and the layout and all of that hop back to episode one of the renovation we cover the entire layout and design process and uh give a whole house tour which is kind of fun to go back and watch now because this is a completely unrecognizable space now compared to what it was <laughs> when we had the entry to the great room this was the, the front door of the house was right here we had that was like that was like a little hutch thing this was the enter the doorway or the walkway into the kitchen and we had all this was all closets here and then we had the stairs you know down to the basement right here so i look at the old pictures and i'm like i can't even remember what that uh, used to be like. The first planned furniture project is still kind of tied to this whole project and that is the, uh, the breakfast uh, bench and uh, table that's going to go right here. And I am looking forward to it, even though it is kind of still part of this because it is like its own little furniture piece that kind of goes here. And, you know, the bench is a bench or whatever, but the table, I think, will be pretty interesting. I got to sort of experience the joy of making woodworking type stuff with making the island. And the table itself lends itself to have a lot of the same design elements as the, uh, the leg assembly of the island. So the table itself as planned actually borrows a lot of the, I guess, the chunkier feel of the leg assembly and actually has the exact same legs um, on it that the island does. It actually has like, you know, four of them because there's this pair and then the pair on the other side. Because the trestle design, you got your big old chunky uh, rails in there. And it's, I think it's going to be a really fun project and there's a lot of, like nuance to how you get all this joinery to kind of work out and look good and uh, all of that. And this is just a uh, kind of overview of how the bench kind of situation is going to work. I think this is going to be kind of fun. I've never done any kind of like built-in uh, seating before. So that's that's kind of fun. And there's still like some like woodworky type stuff in this, uh, this leg assembly here. This right here is the full-size uh, pattern view of that whole leg assembly. 
and at least the leg assembly on this side is going to like nest right into the staircase and come out of the uh, the post detail here on the wall. And at least as I'm planning for right now, the uh, the table and the bench will be a guild project. So I'm actually looking forward to getting back to doing a little more instructional teaching type of videos. It's been uh, like three years since I did the I think the dressing vanity was the last uh, guild project that I did. And that was the fall of 2020. It's almost four years now, which is you know scary and uh, terrifying in itself that much time has gone by. But I'm, I'm looking forward to having this thing be a really fun and exciting uh, class that really brings you along with all the nuance and intricacies, especially this time because the, I guess the overall design wasn't by me. It was by the architects, but it's going from their uh, you know elevation view basically to like okay now how do we actually make this into a piece of furniture how do we make all the joinery work and how does it actually like you know fit together in three dimensions versus the two-dimensional sketches that we have to start with so i think that's gonna be a really fun exploration and uh i'm looking forward to producing you know that series so currently none of my business revenue comes from commission work and in fact, the last commission piece that I did was the bed swing, and that was in uh, 2017. Now I am, I guess, kind of considering um, taking on commissions again or opening things up to commissions again here uh, in the next few years, because there's only so many things that I need for my own house. And I think it'd be interesting to be able to show some different things, some more things over time. So that is something you might see me do here in the future. And the reason that I, I guess, initially stopped taking commissions is because I want to be able to make whatever I want to make, however I want to make it out of whatever I want to make it. And just didn't really find commission work to be all that, I don't know, pleasant and enjoyable. It uh, was definitely challenging. like mentally to be able to like okay i gotta make what this other person wants how they want it to fit their budget or what have you versus when i was thinking about making things for myself it was the exact thing that we wanted we needed i was passionate i was excited about the project and um that uh that feeling is something that i really enjoy so i think if i were to take on some um, new commission thing in the future it would be fairly selective and it would be something that I would uh, definitely have to enjoy to be able to actually feel any joy <laughs> making whatever it is that someone else wants me to make. I think that uh, I, like a lot of people, struggle with uh, sort of a, the same thing when it comes to projects and DIY or whatever a certain aspect of it is. Uh, finishing the project. <laughs> I, I feel like, at least for me personally, like I get to like a certain point where I'm like just barely there to the end and I'm like, nope, I'm done. I need to do something else. Uh, <laughs> but the way that I combat that is I typically have multiple projects going on at the same time. So that allows me to mentally kind of escape from the project that's giving me problems and allows me to kind of do something else for a bit and then come back to the project that I'm trying to finish and, and actually finish it in some kind of a happy and joyous way. And honestly, for a lot of times, it's as simple as like, I'm just gonna go out and cut up a log on the sawmill or go stack wood or you know do something else that's, like, it's, it's its own little project, it's self-contained. The nice thing about the sawmill stuff is that it's a fairly quick project. You know, to, to sop a log and make a video about cutting a log is basically, most of the time, it only takes one day from start to finish. So I know that like going into it that day, I know that when I get to the end of the day, I will have something complete. I will have a fully shot video and I can kind of be excited about having something done, which is, uh, it's a fantastic feeling just to be able to have some sense of accomplishment for something you know that's going to be easier than uh whatever it is i'm doing the nice thing with the, the house stuff is i still have kind of the same thing where there's so many like mini projects that go into the entire thing that 
and the, the scheduling of everything kind of make, makes it so I have to hop between all these different things. Like I mentioned, I have six, no, five. I'm starting six next week. I'll have six going. Um, currently five videos in my head that are currently somewhere in production. The drawers video, you see the drawers in the shop. That's where those are at. I have the, the China Hutch cabinet that was out in the paint shop. That's going to be come back in here again to get finished out. You know, I got the trim out there. It's ready to go into the house because it's been in the paint shop as well. So it's like all this back and forth helps to kind of keep it refreshing and interesting because I'm not like just totally stuck on one single project for the duration of the time. It's only a couple of days here and then a couple of days here and then three hours here and then 30 minutes here <laughs> until eventually all of these culminate into completed sub projects and they just kind of boop, 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 and everything's done. <laughs> so this is a great question, but unfortunately I don't have like a nice solid concrete answer for you on this. Uh, you know, growing up, I certainly spent time around trees. I spent a lot of time outside, spent a lot of time climbing trees and interacting with trees, but the fact that they were trees was kind of irrelevant. I would have climbed on anything that uh, was climbable. It wasn't until I got into woodworking and then further along when I got into actually making my own materials that I actually started uh, paying attention to trees themselves and knowing what a certain tree was versus like, it's a tree versus it's a maple tree or it's a white oak tree or it's a red oak tree or birch tree or whatever. I didn't really have any sort of like knowledge on what the heck a tree was. And as far as being educated on trees, I'm not really educated on trees. I'm educated on dead trees <laughs> and I guess the amount of education I have on living trees stems from what they look like on the insides when I cut them up when they're dead. <laughs> so I'm, I'm more of a mortician than like a doctor of trees I guess. And what's kind of funny about traveling and vacations or whatever is that most of the traveling I do now is work related so it's sort of always associated with uh, woodworking. So that, there's that, I guess. <laughs> but for the last few years, now that the kids are a bit older, I think every summer we uh, rent a cabin and we'll just go and kind of stay out there. And I just kind of unplug and don't really think about work. And that is, uh, it's actually quite nice to get away from everything and not think about it. So I think it's gonna do it for this one. Thank you again to everyone who submitted questions and participated in the question gathering process. I think we'll probably do another set of these in the fall sometime. So look forward to that. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the questions that I answered already today, <laughs> please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking. Goodbye.